and the Sydney club side Canterbury Bankstown. And talking of New Zealand, uh, I'm very proud to uh, announce or to reiterate for the benefit of Queensland viewers that Network 10, which takes in, of course, Channel O in Brisbane and associate stations throughout Queensland, will be again presenting the internationals in 1980, as we did in 79. We've uh, been awarded the rights to telecast the test matches in New Zealand back to Australia next month. And so that's something we can look forward to and uh, very proud to be associated with it. OK, so uh, the first kick of the match in general play from Perry Haddock and uh, Stan Cutler decides to run it up to a point midway between the 22 and halfway, his own end of the field. Canterbury Banks down without their representatives, but they have got some class players with Steve Mortimer and Stan Cutler in their ranks tonight. And this man taking it ahead is a former Queenslander, David Moffat, playing in his third uh, top game in 1980. He had a disastrous 1979 with that fractured arm, had no luck at all. And this is the man they're going to have to contain, a television co-commentator. Last Wednesday night, Graham Hughes has played Sheffield Shield cricket and rugby league for the state of New South Wales. One of the famous three brothers, one of them on the ground at the moment, is Mark and his uh, brother, Gary, a dummy half. So for uh, New Zealanders in particular, we have a side with three Hughes brothers in the team and two Mortimers tonight. Keith Barnes, Canterbury banks down. They've had four wins and four losses this year. Uh, you'd have to be surprised by their relatively poor showing after their grand final appearance against St George last year, I suppose. Yes, I suppose so. They've certainly uh, been inconsistent, uh, certainly putting some good performances together, but nowhere near the, uh, the type of form that uh, earned the... Uh, the applause of so many people in that grand final last year but I was impressed uh, by the way they came back against St George on uh, Sunday and uh, certainly the return of a player like Graham Hughes could uh, spark a revival they've got as you said a lot of great players in the side uh, Steve Mortimer is going to cause this countryside a lot of headaches out here this evening but uh, in country's favour of course is the fact that um, the nucleus of this side performed so well against City Seconds uh, at the cricket ground on Saturday, they uh, they gave a wholehearted performance and uh, certainly they should carry on in that vein out there this evening. Well, a lot of them came on as uh, replacements too, Keith, in the first side and, uh, and, and acquitted themselves very well too. Frank Hyde, while we've got you there, uh, I made a comment in the preview that uh, the country seconds went down by a point to probably the second best side in the world last Saturday. Would that be fair comment? I would have to agree with that. And you consider how uh, the Australian top side uh, dealt with uh, the uh, Great Britain team and of course you know what's happening, happening to the New Zealand uh, teams that have, we've seen over here. Uh, I, uh, I would be prepared to uh, go out on a limb and say that that city second side was the sec at least the second best in the world. Well that penalty was rather stupidly given uh, by Perry Haddock uh, against Canterbury and against his opposite number, the marker interfering with the man playing the ball. And so Canterbury banks down, levelling up the penalty situation, one apiece after a matter of a couple of minutes, and Moffat it is in number 11 for Canterbury. A couple of metres on the New South Wales countryside of halfway. Steve Mortimer out to Cutler, and now this man is Pomfret in four and giving it away to Chris Mortimer, who's down inside the 32 metre line. And he's uh, pulled down on the far side of the paddock by Parvey. This is Gary Hughes. Steve Mortimer picking up the dregs. The ball was uh, meant, in fact, for Mark Hughes. Graham a dummy half through his legs. A talented player. Fractured cheekbone earlier in the year, putting a rather sizable punctuation into, who, uh, into 1980 for him. Gary Hughes. Number three is Chris Mortimer. Came into the Canterbury side at grand final time as 5 8 and performed the pivot role very, very capably. A country player, the second rower, one of the youngest players, Brian Baptiste, 19-year-old. Dummy half is Morgan. Haddock. Nearly a shepherd. That man is Roger Beetson. He's the oldest player in the uh, New South Wales countryside, which is a very young one uh, if you take their average age. Haddock again. The 5'8", number 6, Terry Westblade, who scored a try on Saturday. Behind uh, Haddock and allowed to play on is Neville Bulldog. Haddock was looking to clear the ball then. It's a good jinking run by Westblade. The tackler for Canterbury was Moffat around the legs and uh, referee Bradstock is 
about to pack a scrum down. Well, that's yeah. Graham Muses, uh, that very prominent at this stage of the uh, of the game. It could be that he's uh, he's going to do as much as he possibly can before his uh, lack of match conditioning uh, uh, shows itself in uh, the later stages of the game. It'll be interesting to watch us how how he can keep going. Frank, um, the the annual criticism of uh, city country matches was on again last week. Um, no, I believe a lot of it constructive, but some yeah. of it, uh, some of it said without stopping to think that these boys come down here every year, having seen a lot of their brothers and cousins, if you like, uh, joining city clubs. Interesting on Saturday to take a look at the statistics of the number of country-born players and Queensland-born players in that Sydney first side. And that's right. Well, there, were, there were three Queenslanders. There were. Uh three city-born players, there was a rugby union player and six country-born players, so uh, uh, as, rather than it being a, an indictment of the, the country players, it's an indictment of the city clubs because there's only, in 12 city clubs, they can only produce three city players to, uh, to represent uh, city first. Right on. Stephen Lowe now, the boy with the flowing locks. And number eight is Penn Gilly, he's a 12 and a half stone lock. Uh, quite lightly built really, comes from Corindai, comes from a well-known family up in that area where I had the pleasure of spending a football season when I was a bit younger. Perry Haddock turning it back to Morgan, the hooker from Griffith, he plays with Griffith Black and Whites, they have two clubs there, Griffith Black and Whites and Griffith United. This man carries a big name in rugby league, doesn't he? Roger Beetson, 15 metres out from the line. They're going okay at the moment, country. Haddock got a quick ball away to Penn Gilly, but he's... Well, I thought he knocked it towards the uh, goal line, but referee Brad Strock says, play on. And Stephen Lowe is wrestled down on the end of six tackles and another scrum to go down, this time inside the Canterbury 22. I think 20 minutes very important here for country. I think if uh, Canterbury did take control in that period, well, uh, certainly they could revert to the type of um, uh, thinking that... Uh, that featured their game against City on Saturday, but if they're able to get early points on the board, um, you know, there was a lot of spirit in their second side performance, and they, they could give Canterbury the, a shake. They showed that against Auckland last year, didn't they? The, uh, a, here's a chance for country, yes, they're going into score, number four has gone into score, that's John Jarvie, after the fullback, Neil Appleston, chimed into the back line, Ray. That's a good try by uh, combined country. And here it is on the tooth cut replay, seen from a different angle, as we see Haddock with a long ball through the 5-8th and the fullback Eppleston joined into his back line, Pomfret clung tenaciously to him and uh, plunging in for the, uh, the try was John Jarvie. Head on it looked like this is Keith Barnes and Frank yes, Hyde take it up. A half-hearted tackle bad by Gary, by Hughes, Gary Hughes. He, oh, yes. He gave the impression that he had Appleston well covered, but uh, he brushed him off very, very easily. And Jarvie, of course, uh, received that well-timed pass. It was a top try, and I was looking for uh, um, can of, uh, country points in the early stages, and they, uh, yeah. they certainly came up with them. John Jarvie, the blonde-headed uh, country centre three-quarter Landing the first touchdown, here's the attempted conversion. It's just wide of the uprights. Wing three quarter attempting that uh, goal, Stephen O'Callaghan. And New South Wales country lead 3-0 after nine minutes of time gone. That young try scorer comes from North Canberra in group eight. There has been a lot of criticism of Canterbury's defence, Frank, in the Premiership, yes, hasn't there? Well, but it's been mainly through the forwards. That's right, but Keith, they haven't recovered from the, the building they got against Western Suburbs. They, they've played some brilliant attacking football, uh, as you remember, against uh, Manly Moringa, one try which has been spoken of and uh, will be spoken of for years. But uh, apart from that, they've, uh, they've displayed some abominable uh, tackling. The defence has been shocking, particularly, as you say, through the forwards, but the backs have been uh, loose too. Well, that was a bad one on that occasion, and uh, Glossop wouldn't have been too happy. It was very unlike Gary Hughes, that one, because he's usually a, a very stout defender. Haddock switching the point of the attack to the blind side, and Penn Gilly is tackled by number 13 as Graham Foe for Canterbury tonight. Haddock again, uh, always doing something different, which is probably the reason why so many have judged him as the country player of the year. And now, getting the kick in the 5-8 West Blade, it's, it's a big kick, it's down over the head of Cutler, could just as easily have taken a right-hand turn and found touch. 
And Cutler takes it back and is tackled by the kicker Westblade in a combination with halfback Haddock. Lee Pomfret, formerly with St George, away from the dummy half and then met and pulled down by front row forward Neville Bulldock. And players on the halfway mark as it goes to Steve Mortimer to Mark Hughes. And he's juggled it and still got it. Well done. Ball was thrown to him too hard by Steve Mortimer, who's gone to dummy half. And Gary Hughes. It was Pomfret giving it through to Graham Hughes and then put down by Stan Cutler and he was going to be a handful for uh, for Perry Haddock. It was a good pass too and uh, Cutler of course is a fine player. He injects himself into that Canterbury back lane very, very well and uh, he certainly picked his time there. Received a good pass from Hughes and then uh, inexplicably put the ball on the ground. He's only a jockey-sized halfback, this fellow. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he's smaller than Steve Topper, the other country halfback who we remarked many times when he was with South last year was about as big as Peter Cook. Very cheeky, very confident player. They've got to be, haven't they, to play half? At that weight. <laughs> he's 5'6", by the way, and weighs 10 stone after a shower. Is that right? Ringing weapons, eh? Well, there he is alongside Steve Mortimer. Steve's a giant. As he goes away to the uh, to the left haddock. Well, he's pretty solid in the legs there, uh, Ray. Yes, yeah, so I was looking thighs, at him in the dressing room too. Mm. He's very solid there. Kicks the ball well too. Tell you what, that was a well-timed pass. Thrown by Eppleston, the fullback, to this man who's running with it now, Stephen Lowe. But that's twice Eppleston's been in the play and both times he's looked, uh, he's looked good. He had a big part in that try, haddock. Cuts one out. Number nine is Batiste, but he's called him for a shepherd. Yeah, as a matter of fact, on an occasion early in the match, I was about to say, by Joe, that should have been a shepherd, I thought. And uh, on the far side of the field, one had to restrain the comment, but it was very, very clear there that uh, Barry Bradstock had no alternative but to give the penalty to Canterbury. And finding touches, Chris Mortimer. 15 metres on the New South Wales countryside of Hartway, the place kick to restart will be taken by Pat English, the hooker deputising for George Paponis. Graham Foe has his legs cut from under him. Moffat. Tackler was uh, Tony Morgan. Graham Hughes had to reach for it, did well to pull it in. Mark Hughes trying to split them. And he will too if they give him any, uh, any latitude. He's in fine form, Mark Hughes, Steve Mortimer, Gary Hughes, standing, getting forced back now. Penalty to Canterbury. Overindulging in the tackle is the ruling against the country 5'8", Terry Westblade. And a chance here for uh, Steve Gearan to come up and take this uh, attempted penalty for the Canterbury side. Steve Gearan... One of the uh, one of the glamour players, I suppose, would be a way of describing him. He's um, very popular at uh, the Bulldogs camp. He's a school teacher, twelve stoner. Kicked a lot of goals last year, Ray, but uh, hasn't been as successful as a goal kicker this year. Mm. In fact, Frank, up to the end of '79, he had, uh, I think, scored something like 550 points for the Canterbury Club. That's the length of the kick he's got, about 26 metres. 604 points, in fact, uh, he had scored up to the end of 1979. Steve Gearan. In fact, uh, holds the club point scoring record. And this is a chance to bring it down to 3-2 with New South Wales Country leading 3-0 at the moment. That looks good. No, it's just wide. He had plenty of elevation and uh, heaps of distance and had the head down over the ball until the last second. But 3-0 with an unsuccessful attempted at penalty by that man, Steve Guerin. Graham Hughes will take this ball up. Eight metres on countryside of halfway. Dummy half Pat English. Coming on to it is Foe, that's him. Around the legs, Morgan. Yes, he's involving himself in the game pretty well, young Morgan. He's uh, apparently only 18 years of age. He's leading in the scrums at the moment, 4-2, mm. and given, uh, doing a lot of work in the uh, middle of the ruck there. Mortimer, Hughes. 
Again, Mark Hughes. And now that's Chris Mortimer. And the ball has gone straight over the touchline. Gary Sullivan, a good couple of metres in front of the actual flight path. They had an overlap there too. It was the winger who came in and took uh, Chris Mortimer. They're doing nicely, but the pass was bad. Yes, he probably didn't have any option there, did he? Because uh, Mortimer was uh, sort of flying himself That's and right. in the clear, and he timed himself, he came in well and made him hurry the pass. That's a valuable scrum win for country. And uh, West Blade. That's uh, Baptiste, the second rower. West Blade again. Haddock with that kick that could be a bit deep yes it's too full and uh, on the uh, on the full over the touch for a scrum to restart 10 meters on countryside of halfway country uh, jointly sponsored this year by uh, Caltex and Tooth and Company the promoters uh, the sponsors of this promotion Steve Mortimer looking to make the break but tied up by West Blade and uh, lock forward Pengilly Graham Foe goes ahead, does well too, back to English. Now Gary Hughes, then away to Pomfret. A quick ball out to Chris Mortimer. Sullivan's coming up in support, but a good tackle out there by the try scorer for country, John Jarvey. English to dummy half. Steve Mortimer. Gary Hughes. That's Pomfret. Through a gap. Past Westblade's tackle. Inside the 22. Graham Hughes storming onto the ball. Tackle about 12 metres out by the country second rower, John Cooper, who in fact is their captain. Graham Hughes goes ahead himself. And is tackled about three metres out from the line. Mark Hughes is the dummy half. Across through Steve Mortimer. Gary Hughes. Pomfret calling for it. A misunderstanding. Picked up by Jarvie for country. Bad misunderstanding there, wasn't it? Seven metres inside the 22. Canterbury starting to look very good. And then breaking down at that vital moment. Cooper comes from Bega. In fact, I'm led to believe the first rep that Bega have had uh, in 33 years. And they're a very proud township with uh, John Cooper leading the side tonight. A little man, Haddock, needs no description. Any further anywhere. Baptiste. The two Hughes brothers make the tackle. That's Pengilly. Ball is going to go into touch unless Steve Guerin motors. He's made it in. No, he's ruled him into touch. He stepped out as he picked the ball. The ball didn't go into touch, but he stepped out as he, as he uh, handled it. Touch judge having uh, the opinion that uh, when he in fact came into contact with the ball, he had a foot into touch. Even though probably a fraction of a second later, both his foot and the ball were back in the field of play. Probably a Good ruling. Steve Mortimer feeding. And a race for the ball. Now that country lock pin Gilly must have been very close to offside, but uh, Mortimer, well, now, referee Bradstock has indicated that Pen Gilly has uh, used some uh, illegal play in the tackle that followed uh, on Steve Mortimer. In fact, he had a look at a bandage on his wrist. Did you notice that? Yes, I didn't know whether he was talking about that or whether Pengilly was indicating that he'd been bitten or something. Yeah. I don't know. Do you think so? Well, it's hard to say. It's um, yeah. certainly, um, I'd be surprised if it was involving uh, Stevie Mortimer. Graham Foe has taken play a few metres onto the countryside of halfway. Steve Mortimer, Gary Hughes, a dummy to his brother, and then to Peter Casillas, who's back in the top grade side tonight at the... Um, with the withdrawal of Steve Folks, Gary Hughes. A lofted pass and beautifully directed to Guerin, who goes in field and away from a couple before running into the waiting arms of Bulldog. And this loose ball has given country the opportunity through Roger Beetson of taking it back for six tackles, which should see the first quarter whistled out with country leading 3-0. Saturday's big game. We're back uh, back with the big game on Saturday after a one-week layoff. Uh, due to a contractual uh, situation, we were unable to do Saturday. But we're back with the big ones, St. George and East on Saturday. That should be a good game at uh, Jubilee. But there's the siren. Referee Bradstock uh, says that'll do us for the first 20 minutes with Country leading Canterbury Bankstown with a good performance at the moment. Three points to nil.
for you now and uh, for those not familiar with the tooth cup and I guess 99.9% .9 of you are the uh, sides run to the same end of the field for the first two quarters before the switch around with the same side kicking off on the two occasions prior to half time <laughs> Graham Foe tackled by Tony Morgan And this is a much more determined effort from uh, the number one countryside tonight. So as I've pointed out before, made up largely of the country twos. Graham Hughes, a man they have to contain. I know it sounds easy to say it, but they've just got to contain him. He's a very classy player as a touch judge goes in to make a report. It was on Graham Hughes uh, interfering with the player who tackled him. Frank, uh, you again, I imagine, will be taking one of those very well-known tours across to the uh, Shaky Isles. Yes, sir, I have about 50 or 60 coming with me. That's only a small contingent for F. Hyde tours. I've seen you with four buses on the continent. <laughs> yes. So, tackled now on halfway as Roger beats him. I fancy that he may have lost that ball, but uh, referee Bradstock disagreed as uh, Batiste is forced back by Peter Casillas. The dummy half is Morgan. Haddock and the run round, the dummy, and uh, the dummy was in fact to switch the point of attack. But Gary Hughes tackles the little halfback. Beats and goes away. As they call him the boys, jokingly in the dressing room, the grandfather of the side. Westblade, Haddock. That man is Pengilly. Rangy lock forward, pushing off Peter Casillas. But the tackler was Pat English in combination with uh, David Moffat. Number nine again is Batiste, who uh, who runs strongly. He's taken the ball up a few times, and he, he doesn't right. go around people. There must be a bit of dew on this grass, uh, Keith. They, you notice how they're slipping, uh, even with the slightest steps. Both both teams are uh, are unable to uh, keep their feet. It's one thing about country, though, they're pre prepared to give themselves plenty of depth and attack, oh, aren't yes. they? Not in this particular situation here, but they are standing deep when they've got the ball and coming onto it pretty strong. Mm -hmm. Ooh, Jerry mm -hmm. Hughes, mm -hmm. tackled by Javi, and just as well he was, because Pomfret could see plenty of open territory in front of him. This is Pomfret now. Yeah, bad. Uh, I thought he just hung on just that fraction too long. Well, there was Mark Hughes galloping along and not watching the man with the ball, and uh, that's why country have got the ball now, uh, Callaghan to play it. He's midway between 22 and halfway on Canterbury's end of the field. Haddock, West Blade. Graham Hughes and his brother Gary have him. Dummy half beats him. Through 10, Cooper. Nine is Batiste. And he's sat on the turf there by Graham Foe. But he is a strong runner with the ball, this country second rower. Now Cooper, his second row partner. A flick pass. Hello. Morgan. It's a show of confidence coming out in country. They're controlling the ball pretty well. They're not making the silly mistakes that uh, that uh, Canterbury have been making. Certainly on that occasion, uh, Westblade was under a lot of pressure from uh, Mark Hughes coming up very quickly. But uh, they've been controlling the ball pretty well. Canterbury have made eight errors as against Country's three. We haven't seen Steve Mortimer have opened up yet, Frank. No, not as yet. Uh, well, they haven't been getting much of the ball from the uh, this one. Yeah. Uh, not cleanly. No, but even in the rucks, he's no. content to turn and feed the ball out, That's and all right. of a sudden, uh, you'll find that he will open up, and uh, and then, of course, once he does, he really sets up Canterbury so the light. There's no doubt about that. Apparently, he came back to his best on Saturday, Sunday against St George. Yes, in the second half. So, nine metres on the Canterbury side of halfway, the free place kick taken by Lowe to Cooper, the run round, and back to Beetson. Dummy half is Bulldock. That's Cooper, number 10, the captain from Bega. They've been down here in Sydney now. I suppose it must be just over a week. And uh, 
every day together must be proving valuable to them as they get to know one another. Geographics play a very big disadvantage uh, to New South Wales countrysides. It's impossible to get them together, but through Tooth and Company and Caltex, they're able to do that these days for a little time anyway. And the uh, referee is playing the first of the infringements and setting a scrum 35 metres out from Canterbury's line. Canterbury ball. Hughes. Cutler over his shoulder. Pomfret has it. And he's lost it. And it stacks on the mill out there at the moment. The country are lucky that, that uh, Canterbury are losing it because they're standing much too shallow, Keith, uh, uh, from that uh, scrum formation. Uh, the, the, the openings are there galore. Yeah, well, I think Graham, uh, Gary Hughes is creating a few yeah. opportunities there and unfortunately his passes are just going astray. He's a very clever player. Haddock. Cooper, he knows he's been tackled by Graham Hughes. Last tackle. Haddock. Splitting them, getting up. Oh, that's too high for mine, that tackle from uh, Steve Mortimer. Now, the referee has ruled, he's ruled the shepherd, has he, or no, the offside? Offside, offside, yes. But by gee, I tell you what, Steve Mortimer seemed to me to be a bit high. Comments to uh, Keith Barnes? Yes, well, he yeah. certainly was around the, uh, just uh, around the <laughs> upper shoulder, wasn't he? And uh, certainly the referee was more uh, uh, concerned with the uh, the offside pass. Well, there's the tackle, and I, I probably looking at the second time would say that he's contacted the shoulder and he's finished up around his neck there's no doubt about that but uh, Canterbury got the penalty for the certainly there are a lot of those, those tacklers that look a heck of a lot worse than what they are yeah. not suggesting otherwise still the point is that they've come out of it with a penalty when one could have easily been given against them English now 11 metres into the opponent's half Mortimer Mark Hughes, not held, so he pinched a couple of more metres. Number 10 is Cooper, the captain. The other man was Neville Bulldock. Gary Hughes, and he's brought down by Westblade. Steve Mortimer, long pass over the head of uh, Guerin, was far too high. In fact, Steve Guerin is saying to Mortimer, what do you think, I am a giant or something? And uh, Steve Mortimer said, oh, I'm sorry, mate. That's the way it goes, though. Scrum, clean heel. No, no, referee Bradstock said, no, I want it again, thank you. Haddock feeds it. It's a country ball and the battle of the little men. And Graham Hughes says, I'll have tuppence worth of that, thank you. Low. I said to him, do you get upset when people say, have a look at that bloke with long hair playing rugby league? He said, I couldn't care less. He said, it's me. That's the way I want to be which was very much what Russell Fairfax told him. Oh. You put it right into his hands too, didn't you? He was offside too, you know. He wasn't even behind him when he gave it to him. So the scrum just outside the 22 line. Danger for country. Cutler into the back line, makes the extra man, steps and uh, weaves up to the 22, but a good tackle by Batiste, and uh, the ball in the possession of uh, Lee Pomfret. 10 metres inside the 22 line. Steve Mortimer now. Mark Hughes. Gary Hughes. Turns it. Mark Hughes. This is Canterbury. At the moment, 8 metres inside the 22 with Sullivan. Back to uh, Casillas. And he's tackled there by Bulldog, number 11. Simon Brockwell also in the tackle. Pat English taking it within about... Oh, gee, Canterbury's player, Graham Hughes, was felled in the back play. Play on, says the referee. I'm just looking as a touch judge in. Yes, this will be against country. John Cooper was. Cooper was it. Yeah. Graham Hughes was coming up to take the pass from Pat English, and all of a sudden his legs, they kept going, but the upper part of the body stopped. Cooper is being spoken to and a penalty goes to Canterbury. Practically right in front, we've got it on the disc. See it again. 
It was from this passage of play as Pat English went from dummy half, crabwise. Uh, there's Graham, number 10. Oh, bingo. And Cooper says, uh, do you mind? <laughs> he never even looked like getting the ball either, did he? <laughs> That's going to tackle on suspicion. Certainly on that occasion, um, country weren't fault, but I think they were a little bit fortunate that, uh, that Batiste was so aware of, uh, of the dangers with Canterbury a couple of minutes ago, because he broke very quickly from the scrum to tackle Cutler when he came in, and then That's of course right. he covered uh, Mark, he was on the opposite side of the field when it went back across there. So Steve Guerin has scored 51 points this year. With a try and 24 goals. Young man who claimed the balls at Western Suburbs that day were too hard. And he's kicked that one. Three points to two in favour of New South Wales country and the Canterbury fans. A time for them to rejoice. But still trailing by the point. But looking a better combination, certainly there looks to be a lot more flair and attack in this Canterbury side than there is in the country. Country no prepared to graft away and... Uh, play more up and down the field certainly they are switching the point of the attack with uh, with Haddock but they don't have the uh, the creative players uh, that Canterbury have in the person of uh, say Graham Hughes Gary Hughes etc Peter Casillas taking it out of the air in Kazali fashion and this is uh, Graham Foe halted 10 meters short of halfway David Moffat's turn Second big forward up. Quite a common plan for uh, most sides. Now they swing it. Mark Hughes looks for the opening, but it's uh, only a needle-eye one, and he's tackled by country. Simon Brockwell, one of the tacklers. Gary Hughes. Well, uh, that's Gearin. He got himself... Uh, well, he seems to, for the moment, gone into the centres, and Pomfret's gone out to the wing. I'll just check that for you. Steve Mortimer now. And that's the end of six and a scrum, 11 metres on the countryside of halfway. I'll just check those two players for you. Uh, Gearin's coming out now, back to his, to his flank. Three, two in favour of New South Wales country. You're watching the Tooth Cup, a Network 10 presentation. As Steve Mortimer starts to work himself now for one of the few times Cutler's pass behind Chris Mortimer booted over the touchline and a scrum will go down just outside the 22. That's where that shallow uh, back line of country are, are going to get them. It's going to get them into trouble before the night is out if Canterbury can get a bit of ball from the scrum. Yeah, well, they are moving up very quickly. Mm. And, uh, of course, Steve Mortimer is the type of player that can get in behind that defence, mm. as he showed on that occasion. This is Appleston. Third touch of the ball, or third time he's become involved. They say he had a good game on Saturday. His defence was particularly safe. Brock will play it. Canterbury leading in the scrums at this stage, 8-7, to seven, with uh, also getting the penalty, 6-4. Simon Brockwell, number three. Penalty against Canterbury inside the five. On behalf of uh, everybody involved in rugby league, I'd like to express the thanks of, of those people to Buttercup Bakeries, who in conjunction with the Daily Mirror and Channel 10, ran the very successful Little League coaching clinics in Sydney all last week. And the youngsters, obviously, they had a great time learning from the heroes in rugby league. And the clinics have now been recorded by us at uh, Channel 10 Sport and will be telecast as a coaching series commencing in a few weeks' time. As country go onto the attack again, and again we see the fullback Eppleston Brought down just outside the 22 from Pengilly to Haddock and across to Westblade. Bumping off Graham Hughes. Nine metres out from the 22. This is the last tackle. Bulldog. Taken by Mark Hughes and a scrum will go down. You got a bad centre this job. No, he's made a good break on that occasion and sent a really good pass to Eppleston. He's got some penetration.
I just like to see them standing a little bit deeper oh, and, uh, well, in attack here in this particular situation. See, they're not, not losing the scrums by that one. It's what, no. was it 8-7? Or 8-6 eight, eight, is it? Yeah. No, 8-7. So uh, they're getting enough of the ball, but they're making it difficult for themselves the way they're standing from the scrum. Pomfret. Taken by Batiste. Doing a lot of tackling, Batiste. Yeah. I think he's had a good game. Uh, both in attack and defence. Keith, as we see David Moffat take it up. A few extra metres. Pat English. Graham Hughes into dummy half. Goes himself, splits them, two to beat, up to the 22. Steve Mortimer driven into the ground by Eppleston. And dummy half is uh, Graham Foe. But referee Bradstock has given a penalty. Against the marker. And this is virtually a presentation for Steve Guerin jogging in in number five to take this right in front. Cameras will show you just how in front he is. Couldn't be any uh, simpler for Steve Gearing. Well, that's the second penalty right in front of the post that Cooper has given. It's not a good, good example as captain of the side. And Steve Gearing almost ready. There's that little jockey-sized halfback Perry Haddock. Stands and uh, analyzes the situation. Perry Haddock, country's number seven. There he is. And so we swing back to Guerin for the attempted goal. Should be a formality. <laughs> Ray Golden Boots disagrees with those comments. Yes, it was just a formality. <laughs> Four points to three in favour of Canterbury Banks down now. And the blue and white flags uh, again showing jubilation. But um, two goals as against one try. The, the purists, I think is the right word, Frank Hyde, disagree with <laughs> any jubilation in those cases, don't they? Yes, well, in, in a case like that, though, I mean, uh, it's, uh, um, it, it's uh, perfectly justified in being uh, in front after... The captain of the opposing side gives two penalties right under his own goalpost. Sullivan! Ooh, ankle yes. tap. It was a good step, but it was a good run that's taken him to this point on the field. 15 metres his own side of halfway, and here's Steve Mortimer now, who received some attention, incidentally, while uh, the goal was being taken. Dummy half is Pat English. That's Graham Hughes. Three men required to pull the second rower down. He's been well and truly spotted tonight, Graham Hughes, but still able to make a break or two. His brother Mark is tackled. I think his return is going to make a big difference to uh, Canterbury Banks Town, Keith. Um, oh, Graham yes. Hughes. He sets a great pattern around the right oh, that was well Perfect done. from Gary Hughes to Cutler to Pomfret. Chris Mortimer's coming up. Cutler's got the pass away. Chris Mortimer gives it back to Gearan. That's a great try. <laughs> That's a superb Canterbury try. The entertainers of Rugby League have done it again. Let's have a look at this try on the Tooth Cup replay from point A to point Z. Gearin a dummy half to Steve Mortimer to Gary Hughes and he held that pass as he to Pomfret and gave it to Cutler. Who gave it to Pomfret. We're now inside the 32. Back to Cutler. He's gone but he's not dead. And he got the pass away to Chris Mortimer who was tackled. And he got it on the inside of the Gearin. Who was back with a dummy half from the way of the ball.
Cup taking on the revitalised 1980 North Sydney side. And then every match we make in June will be determined at the Monday and 80 quarter finalist. So it'll be as versus Queensland country next Wednesday here at Lake. So in fact, Lake Mount will be great for the presence of Queensland on Tuesday. Thank you. 